What's up everybody out there in brew land? This is Roy Davis with MOA Brew Company and I'm getting ready to actually start on a oatmeal coffee porter uh, that my wife requested. Uh, she's pregnant right now uh, and is due early November so she said she would like to have a beer ready post baby uh, once she's able to have one probably back into the month getting back into uh, the early December time frame. So I'm going ahead and getting ready because it's going to need to sit in the fermenter for a while. And I'm wanting to document this brew. I want to be able to teach some lessons learned that I've run across along the way. But one of the big things that I really thought of when I was prepping for this is probably the most important step that you can have whenever you are getting ready to brew. And that is actually the sanitization of all of your brewing equipment, as well as just kind of cleaning up some residual stuff from previous brews that you may still have in your brew kettle or a keg, there may be just some clumps of the trube or some sticky stuff off of the wart that actually didn't come out of some of the uh, cracks, depending if you have a uh, runoff tap on your kettle or anything else. So I'm gonna be working to do that, but I just wanted to speak with you guys about some of the steps that I use to make sure that everything is 100% good to go and that I don't allow any other pesky type of microbes to start taking over in the fermenter once I get the wart in there and then wind up with some crazy off flavors and producing some kind of funk beer, which I have in the past. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through this, show you some lessons learned on my part and uh, go from there. And please uh, hit the subscribe button down there on the bottom. Thanks guys. We have our cleaner slash sanitizer. Uh, PBW is uh, the cleaner that I'm just going to go behind on my brew kettle, make sure everything's cleaned up on that and then using the SAR sand to sanitize all the brew equipment, uh, sanitize the brew kettle after I get it cleaned with the PBW. And then also just to kind of go back through and clean all of this equipment that I have here, I use brew in the bag. So I make sure that it's cleaned out following any brew that I do, but I always like to go back and just ensure, you know, there's no residual stuff left there since it's gonna be touching the beer. Uh, some sites, you will see them say, hey, you know, just worry about stuff that's going to be touching the wart post-boil. I am a little finicky when it comes to that, and I just like to make sure that in the process of making this beer, anything that's going to touch it, I want it to be sanitized as best as possible. So I have this stuff in here. Um, I also use the bottling bucket. Uh, one of the great things about it it has the measurements on the side so whenever you're filling it up you can kind of get an exact measure on how much water you want to use especially if you want to go back and put it in your brew kettle or just another pot that you may have uh, to use the boil so i start with two and a half gallons of water and four two and a half gallons of water per star sand guidance um, really at five gallons you're using one ounce so you can see the marks there on the side so since we're using half of that I'm just going to use the half ounce. You take it, easy does it. You just pour it in, get every last little drop that you can. And essentially, you're just gonna mix everything up and you are ready to go. For the PBW piece, what I actually like to do is, this also has a measurement guide of one ounce, one to two ounces per gallon of water. Since I don't really need to use a whole gallon, I just like to take a teaspoon's worth and throw it in there with some of the hot water from the uh, heat up. And then I'll just use that in there and I take my rag and I scour it until it's clean. And so I'll see you on the back end when we start the brew. Happy brewing guys. In regards to temperature, I actually did want to mention a nifty little tip that I ran across um, regarding, you know, how hot to actually have your water when you're either cleaning or sanitizing. So as I stated earlier, the temperature, you know, really calls for you to be somewhere in the ballpark range of 120 to 150 degrees, maybe up to 160 in some circumstances. <clears throat> as far as equipment goes though, what I have learned is that whenever you are actually cleaning the siphon and you're moving water from one, either a bucket or a kettle into some other device, you can actually wind up ruining the siphon tube itself because the hot water over a period of time and the acidity of the star sand can actually start to dry out the uh, plastic fiberglass material and it begins to crack and then from there you wind up with leaks as well as just the 
little small stopper piece that's in there it can come loose and break so it's more of a headache than what it's worth so just keep that in mind too whenever you're transferring the liquids remember what your temperature is try to move it at one of the lower end temps 120 to 125 and then yeah everything should work out and you shouldn't have to deal with having to go out and buy new equipment because you were a dunder skull like I was. All right, so now that everything is pretty much been sanitized after sitting roughly five to 10 minutes, I'm just gonna let uh, the remaining sanitizer hang out in there. Uh, I'll swish it around throughout the brew just to make sure everything is 100% sanitized. Just all the little ends and pieces the same, saving that solution for later on so I don't really have to remake some on the back end of the boil. And then as far as uh, my secondary kettle for whenever I get ready to move from the fermenter or move into the fermenter, as well as the actual brew kettle itself, I'm just letting everything air dry uh, with star sand. One of the great things, you don't actually have to worry about rinsing. And the big thing with not having to rinse is just the way star sand's made, the way it was designed, as well as just the mix ratio that it calls you to use, that one ounce to five gallons, or you know, you can scale it like we did in this, where we used a half ounce for two and a half gallons. But there have been reports in forums where people who've maybe mixed theirs a little bit too rich, meaning they're going over that ratio that they're calling for, they've actually reported having steely slash metallic tasting beer on the back end. There's nothing to confirm that it is the star sands, but they're making a correlation, so there is potential. So with that, if you are mixing a little richer, um, to scale back some, uh, you don't want to go back and rinse because it kind of undoes the good that you did to fight off those microbes. But other than that, we are sanitized, let it dry, and now uh, pull as a pint and uh, get ready to brew. See you in a few for the coffee oatmeal stout. Again, subscribe!